5.1a, Convert Units, One-Step Conversions. Consider the following. We have 57 inches and we're multiplying it by a conversion factor of 1 foot per 12 inches. Remember the word per is a division bar. Just as we would reduce numbers or variables diagonally and vertically in a problem, we can do the same thing with units. Therefore, we can reduce inches and inches because they occur diagonally from each other. This would then result in the multiplication across and we would have 57 feet per 12. When we do the division, we would find that we had 4.75 feet. In this way, we can convert units. We had 57 inches and we wanted to know how many feet that would be. We used what's called a conversion factor in which the top and the bottom are equal. We will divide out units by placing them in the opposite part of the fraction. This means diagonally. A conversion factor is something with the same value in the numerator, in the denominator, but it will have different units. As you can see, the conversion factor here, 1 foot and 12 inches are both the same value, but they are very different units. If you were to draw it out, and let's say that this was 1 foot, and then you marked out the inches, and you could see that there are 12 inches, but that it is also one foot. See how these both have the same value, but they have very different units or the labels. Dimensional analysis is where we multiply by a conversion factor to convert the units. We will look at some examples below. In example one, we have 17.2 miles and we would like to know how many kilometers this is. We would need to look at a table of conversion factors. I will give you the conversion. So we are given that 1.61 kilometers equals one mile. We can now set up a conversion. We start by writing 17.2 miles. Whenever you are given something that net does not have a per or a second set of units, you just place this number over one. We then are going to multiply it by a conversion factor which we were given or we looked up on a table of values. We now need to determine whether the miles goes on the top or the bottom from this conversion factor. Since I want the miles to divide out, I want to put them in the denominator or the opposite or diagonal side. Remember that miles can be abbreviated as MI. On the other side, I will look at the other unit given the other unit given is kilometers. I therefore place the kilometers on the top. I now need to determine where the numbers go. The thing to keep in mind here is that the number goes with its value, meaning that the one will go with the mile and the 1.61 will go with kilometers. Therefore we place a one in the denominator and 1.61 in the numerator. We can now reduce the units and we see that we have kilometers, which is what we were looking for. We now multiply across on the top to find that we get 
0.692 kilometers. This would be over 1, but we, the 1 is not needed. Therefore, we have found that if there are 17.2 miles, it will equal 27.692 kilometers. Let's look at another example of pounds and kilograms. If I am converting pounds to kilograms, I can find in a table that 2.2 pounds equals 1 kilogram. After finding this value, I can then set up the conversion. I start by writing what I already have, or the 88 pounds. Remember, if there's not a second unit given, you put it over 1. We are now going to multiply this by a conversion factor. If we look at the conversion factor, we have pounds and kilograms. I then must determine which goes in the numerator and which in the denominator. Remembering that I would like the unit pounds to reduce out. Therefore, I will put the pounds in the denominator and the kilograms in the numerator. I now look back to the conversion factor to see the number that was associated with pounds and write it next to pounds. I then look at the number associated with kilograms and write it next to kilograms. At this point, I may do reducing in the sense that I can reduce the pounds on both. I am now left with kilograms, which is what I was looking for. This means I may now multiply all of the tops and all of the bottoms. This will give me 88 kilograms over 2.2. I now must do the calculation to find this value. This results in 40. So there are 40 kilograms. Using units in your answer is very important. We now see that for 88 pounds, it equals 40 kilograms. Remember when doing conversions, you must look for a conversion factor in the table that is appropriate. You then must decide whether your values go on in the numerator or the denominator, keeping in mind you would like them to reduce diagonally.